Then I can start measuring up for the pieces that need to go into both cabin two and cabin three. I will say it took three attempts to get the final coat, another bead of the Fix 15 to cover all the edges. Well, now that I've got this insulation in both cabin two and cabin three, you spend a lot of time thinking about how to problem solve.
Now getting back into these cabins so that I can get the insulation and lining in is something I've been looking forward to do. So now it's time to get started on this. The first thing I need to do, the insulation panels down below, they've been under cover, but with all the wind and weather we've had, they have got quite dusty. So I'm just gonna lay those out, give them a bit of a wash down. Then I can start measuring up for the pieces that need to go into both cabin two and cabin three. After that, of course, I'll need to make up some templates to get these panels cut to the right shape, and then they can go in. With that, because I like to do things in batches, I do plan on getting that cabin three panel below the bunk done at the same time, and maybe one or two of the engine bay panels as well. We'll see how we go with that. Well, it's time to get on with finishing these lovely cabinet doors. I will say it took three attempts to get the final coat of the all wood on those looking decent. As I always say, nothing's perfect, but the first two times of trying to do the last coat, I was just unhappy with. So three times lucky, as they say. So just to talk through the process, with regards to the inserts, which I've used this security screen, it's aluminium and powder coated. They were not exactly flat. So what I did was just with the flat edge of my square, I just ran that along where it wasn't quite in the right shape. I just put it on a round bit of foam 
and press that down until they were flat. So now that all of those are done, what I will be doing, I'll get each door, turn it upside down. I've got a bit of cloth down here so that I don't scratch this nice finish. I'll get the chisel and I'm just bumping off any little raised bits of all grip that might have just slightly dribbled down. There's not much. Then with a bit of abrasive paper, just roughen up the surfaces and then I'll use the Fix 15, the black colour this time, run a little bead on there, sit the screen down inside, another bead of the Fix 15 to cover all the edges where I cut these so that there's no unprotected edges to avoid any sort of corrosion over time with that salty air. And then I've got a bit of timber cut to the right size to sit inside so that then I can put a weight on top, a light weight of four kilograms, just to nestle those screens nice and flush with that little rebate edge there so that I get a really close bedding of the insert to the edge of the rosewood to hopefully make it look pretty professional. Well, now that I've got this insulation in both cabin two and cabin three, I can get on with something that I've actually been pretty keen to start. This needed to be done before I can get those panels in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a whole batch of panels as I usually do. So this will include the panels that will go around the engine bay here. So now I can get on with measuring up and then making up templates for these areas. I will be doing things slightly different though because I've gone ahead now and got that paintwork done. I'm going to completely paint everything when they're out of mistress just to make things a lot easier and also quicker. Well, something you don't actually see in any of my videos is the amount of not only hours, I would say weeks, of just sitting and thinking and trying to work out how to do things. Obviously, I don't spend weeks at a time doing that, but I just mean, you know, if you add up the time, there is a lot of time that goes into thinking about the best way to do things. It's so multifactorial and it's so different to building a house because with a house, you, everything's square and it's stationary and it's not going to move ahead and you're not going to need to pull it apart. Whereas with a boat, it's complex curves. It's always going to be moving. 
you're likely going to need to pull things apart to get to other spots later. <laughs> it, there is just so much involved. You spend a lot of time thinking about how to problem solve. So what I'm doing here, these two panels, which are not exactly where they need to be because I've just got them resting there to give me the idea, but they're basically going to close off the cabin two access. And then these panels around the engine bay need to continue on from here. What I have decided is this side of the engine here, there's not gonna be really a need to get in here regularly for maintenance issues. Of course, you always need to take into account needing to get to the whole space where the engine's concerned. However, this side of the engine, the port side, I'm probably not gonna need to get here regularly. The front of the engine, where the heat exchange tube is, which is on this port side, I will be able to access that by getting to the front of the engine. And also the seawater strainer is also on this side, but that's also right at the front of the engine where I'll have a panel that can be removed in order to get to the front of the engine and other bits and pieces where that is. Over the years, and especially since I've been doing the fit out, I really haven't been sure how I'm going to tackle the panels around the engine here. Mostly I was thinking that one panel on either side and one on the front would do the job. But now looking at it, I think breaking up each side into two panels each side would be a better idea. I can make use of these struts here that support the forward end of the cockpit. And also to add with that, this is not part of the plans. This is an extra added because I just thought that made a lot of sense. But I can make use of these to break up that area. And breaking up the area means that once these are mounted in their permanent position, in order to get access to the engine, instead of going to the trouble of having access holes, maybe one or two, I think just having that panel in such a way that I can just unbolt it and remove it when I do need access means that instead of a smaller pigeonhole area where I've got to get in to try and do something, I can remove the whole panel and on both sides, and that will just give clear access the way it is now, which I think is a better idea. Well, that's the thinking, designing and drawing stages done for the next batch of good fit-out panels for the aft of Mistress. Up next is the making process, everybody. You. Well, wouldn't you know it? you got to be lucky sometimes, right? Can I ask you to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and please check out my website. And of course, leave a comment because I like reading what you have to say.